Welcome to the 19th video in this tutorial series on building an e-commerce website using React, Redux, GraphQL, and Firebase. Now in today's video, we're going to be working with Firebase functions. We're going to create an express app that we can deploy as a Firebase function. And this is going to be the back end to our application. Before we get started, I want to encourage you guys to check out my official YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash simple tut, not only to find my other videos, but also the official playlist for this series. And you'll be able to find both previous and upcoming videos as I add them to this playlist. I also want to remind you guys that there is an official GitHub repository for this project. I do commit my code at the end of each of these tutorials and I merge them so you can actually compare your code with mine or you could even clone the entire project. You can find my official website at simpletut.com and of course we have an official Facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash simpletut. But the most important thing is that you like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to turn on those notifications. Up until this point, we've been able to use the client side APIs provided to us from Firebase to handle everything in our application from authentication to the data that we store in our collections. But we can't perform all of these actions on the client side. There are still some things that we have to perform server side on a back end. And that's why in this tutorial, we're going to be deploying an express app as a Firebase function. And this is going to give us an endpoint that we can make asynchronous requests to. And we're going to use this in the next tutorial where we integrate with Stripe's payments API, because that's a great example of something we can only do server side. For obvious security reasons, we cannot process a payment on the client. We have to process the payment on a server. And that's why in this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to Firebase functions. Now we've already used our Firebase console when it came to working with our authentication or our cloud Firestore. But this is the first tutorial that we've looked at Firebase functions. So what I want to do is just come over to this tab and introduce you to this part of your Firebase console. Now, once you create and deploy your Firebase functions, you'll be able to see and manage them here. But of course, I haven't created my Firebase functions yet, so there aren't any here right now. Um, but what I do want you guys to do is come here and click on Get Started, because you're going to be able to find this command that you'll be able to copy and paste into your terminal. And what this will do is it will install the Firebase Tools CLI globally on your machine. And this is what we're going to be using to create our Firebase functions. So all we need to do is just copy this line. I'm going to come over to my command line and I'm just going to paste in that command and hit return. Now I've already installed this, so I don't actually need to install it. Um, but once you have installed it, I just need you guys to uh, log in within your command line. So all you'll need to do is then say Firebase login. And again, click on return and then proceed through uh, the steps. Um, however, you can see here that it already says that I am currently logged in to my Firebase account. So I don't need to do that. But please make sure that you not only install Firebase tools, but you run Firebase login and you, you log into your account within the command line. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the Firebase tools CLI to create our Firebase functions and set that up within our project. Now that's really easy to do. All I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the terminal that is built into VS code. So I'll come up here to terminal and new terminal. And within this, what I'm going to run is Firebase init, right? and click on return. And once I do that, it's going to present me with a number of different options. Now let's just expand this here. And I have to select the option that I want to use. Now here, I want to select configure and deploy cloud functions. So I'm going to click on space to select that. And then I'm going to hit return. It's then going to ask me if I want to use an existing project, which is correct. That is exactly what I want to do. So I'm just going to hit return here. 
and then it's going to show me the projects that I have within my Firebase account. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then it's going to ask me if I want to use either JavaScript or TypeScript. And of course, we're using JavaScript in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and select that. And then finally, it's asking me if I want to use ESLint to help me catch bugs and syntax errors. Of course I do, so I'll say, I'll say yes. And then it's also asking me if I want to install NPM dependencies. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this shortly, but for now, let's just say yes to this too and hit on return. And that's all we need to do. The CLI is going to go ahead and create the boilerplate cloud uh, Firebase functions for us within our project. Okay, so as you can see, the Firebase tools CLI has just finished running and it's created a few new files and folders within my projects directory. Now I'm going to show you the most important ones. So within my root directory, I have a new Firebase RC file. This is where we tell Firebase what project we need to deploy our Firebase functions to. And we also have this functions directory. Now, if I expand that, you're going to see that we have uh, this folder has its own package JSON. We've installed their own NPM modules. Now, what I want you to understand about this is that this is effectively a different project to our application, right? So it has its own package JSON with its own dependencies. Now, if I come into my index.js file, okay, so at this point, we're actually ready to create our express application and create our basic routes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a few dependencies that we need. So I'm going to come into my terminal. I'm just going to go terminal, new terminal. Uh, and this is just a command line that is within um, VS Code. Now, as you can see, uh, we are currently in the base directory of the project. So I actually need to come into my functions directory. So I'll just say CD functions. And as you can see, I'm now within my uh, Firebase functions folder. And we want to install a few new dependencies. So I'm just going to say npm uh, install express and we want course. I'm going to hit return and just let those install. Now that we've installed those dependencies, we're ready to create our Express app. So what I'm going to do is just remove this comment and I'm going to import Express. Um, so I'll just say const Express equals require and we're going to import Express. And then all I need to do is just create an instance of my app. So I'll say const app equals express and I'm going to call that as a function and then uh, now rather than listening to a specific port what we're going to do is we're going to say exports dot API equals functions dot HTTPS and we're going to call on request and we'll just pass in our app and then all we need to do is we need to pull in our middleware so we're going to say const cause equals require we're going to import cause and then we're going to use this so we'll just say cons so we'll just call app.use so this is literally just the same as any other express application that you've you've worked on all we're going to configure here is the origin we're going to set that to true um, and then what i'm also going to do is i'm going to call app.use I'm going to look, we're going to call express.json. And then all we need to do is just create our routes. Now, in this tutorial, the only route we're going to create is our 404 route. So I'm just going to say app.get. Again, the route that we want to create is just going to be our catch all route. So this is going to take in the request and the response object. And then we'll just call response. And we're going to set the status to 404. And we're going to send back a message, which is going to be 404 not found. And save those changes. And that is pretty much all you need to do 
to create your Express application using a Firebase function. So in at this point, we're actually pretty much ready to deploy this uh, as our Firebase function. But what I do want to explain is why the only route I've created is my catch all 404 route, right? Now, the reason is in this tutorial, we are just preparing ourselves for the next tutorial where we actually create and integrate our Stripe Payments API. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna be creating my uh, payments route within this Firebase functions, uh, within this Firebase function. However, in this tutorial, all we're doing is uh, we're setting up the foundations for that and we're just creating our, our basic backend here. So this is just something that we can deploy. But I do want to show you how you can run this locally. So if you come into your package JSONs file and you look at the scripts, you're going to see that if you call the serve script, you actually call Firebase emulators start. And this is just a way that you can actually test this out locally, right? So you can either run this command directly in your command line or you can just call the script. I'm just gonna call the script. So let's come into terminal, new terminal. Make sure again, you're in the correct directory. So I need to make sure I'm in my functions directory. And I'm just gonna call npm run serve. Okay, I'm gonna hit return and that's just gonna start running. Once I've actually run that in my terminal, what you're gonna see is uh, we have our functions API here and it will actually just tell you that it's been initialized and you can view this in the browser by, by visiting this URL here. So I'm gonna hold down command and click on this link. It's gonna open up in the browser and as you can see, we are seeing locally that our Express app is working. So we're hitting that 404 not found route, which is our catch all route. Uh, and again, if I come back over to the code, you're going to see that this is the route we created here. So again, in the next tutorial, we're gonna extend this, we're gonna create our payments route when we integrate with Stripe. But this is enough for now, just to familiarize us ourselves and prepare for the next tutorial where we uh, do something a little bit more interesting. So finally, all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna exit out of this in my command line. And I wanna show you how to deploy this. And it's actually really easy. All you need to do is just call Firebase deploy. So I'm gonna hit that and hit type that in and hit return. Okay, so once we've successfully deployed our Firebase function, I'm gonna come back over to the web browser and as you can see within my functions tab, I've successfully deployed my Express app to a Firebase function. Now, not only can I see that here, I can actually visit this request URL. This is live, it's been deployed. I can view this in the browser and as you can see, I'm getting that same 404 not found request uh, a catch all route that we created. So you know that this is working and we've successfully deployed it. But something that you may or may not notice depending on uh, when you are watching this video tutorial is that Firebase have made some changes um, to how they structure their plans. So as you can see here, it says that node eight has been, has been deprecated. So what does that mean? So if I expand this, what you're going to see is that they're actually saying that starting from uh, the 15th of March, 2021, they will no longer support Node.js version eight, right? And uh, from this point onwards, in order to deploy a Firebase function, uh, what you'll need to do is you'll need to deploy your function using Node uh, version 10. Now, you may be wondering why this is relevant. Uh, well, let's come over to our code and let's take a look. So let's just close out our terminal here and let's actually look in our package JSON. And what you're gonna see is that in our engines, we have defined explicitly that we want to deploy using node version eight. So actually to fix this, all you'd need to do is change this to node version 10, save those changes, come back over to your terminal
and just rerun um, Firebase deploy. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit on enter and let's see what happens. Okay, so you're going to see if I expand this that I'm now getting an error, right? So it says that I get a 400 error billing account for this project was not found. Um, so the only thing that I've changed is I changed the version of Node that I was trying to deploy. So let's come back over to the web browser. Well, what it means is that the only way going forward that you'll be able to use Firebase functions is if you upgrade your plan to the Blaze pay-as-you-go plan. Now, I do want to say here that doesn't mean that you're going to get charged. The Blaze pay-as-you-go plan still features and includes all of the free usage that you got with the Spark plan. It just means that it will unlock these additional features, right? So as long as you don't go over the free usage, you still won't get billed. If you do run into that little gotcha, uh, that is why. You will need to switch to the Blaze plan to proceed and use these Firebase functions. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Um, before I sign off, I want to remind you that I will be sharing a link in the description of this video to the official GitHub repository for this project. At the end of each of these tutorials, I'm committing my code, I'm creating pull requests, I'm merging them. I also want to remind you guys that I have created an official playlist for this series. But as always, I want to encourage you guys to check out my official YouTube channel, my official YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash simple tut. Please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to turn on those notifications.